This is a 2000 Chevrolet Camaro Z28 5.7 liter 6 speed clutch hydraulic release system installation. The slave cylinder is a concentric slave cylinder, meaning it mounts on the front of the transmission. So to replace that, you have to remove the transmission and that's covered on a separate video. The clutch master cylinder is underneath the vacuum brake booster and the steering shaft runs next to it. It's a very tight fit. In fact, I don't have any video of that actual installation. We'll use some still pictures and talk you through that process a little bit. But bleeding this system, we use two techniques. First, we used a technique that starts like this. Open bleed screw, push pedal down, close bleed screw, pedal comes up, open bleed screw, push the pedal down, close the bleed screw, pedal up. Now that sounds like traditional brake bleeding, but we start with the bleed screw open, then push the pedal down rather than pushing the pedal down and then opening the bleed screw. It creates a better flushing technique through the system. But to finish it off and get a crisp pedal, we used vacuum bleeding on the top of the reservoir. So let's take a look at how we install and bleed the clutch on a 2000 Chevrolet Camaro 5.7 liter. The master cylinder mounts to the firewall with two bolts. There's also a clip at the top of the push rod where it attaches to the clutch pedal arm. Now you can remove it Underneath the brake booster, it is kind of tight, so be patient, but remove the entire assembly. After you tap out the roll pin from the old master cylinder, you can take the line, clean it if necessary, insert the new seal on the line. You can only use brake fluid as a lubricant. Don't put any grease or motor oil on that fitting. Insert that fitting into the master cylinder. Tap the roll pin into position. Now this assembly can be inserted back into the hole underneath the brake booster. It's a little bit of a snug fit, so be patient. Now it bolts back up to the pedal cluster assembly, and there's a clip again for the push rod on the pedal arm. And here's a couple pictures of the master cylinder in place underneath the brake booster, and it is a pretty tight fit. Underneath the car you can remove the plug from the slave cylinder, insert the line, push the line in, and you should hear an audible click and you'll feel the line lock in. You can push the line in just a little bit, give it a little tug, and you'll feel that it's securely locked in position. All right, it's time to bleed the hydraulic system. Let me set this up. The system is completely connected. The reservoir has been filled up with fresh brake fluid, and Tim is underneath. Now we're doing this on the ground with the front end raised on jack stands and I have to have the door open for this procedure. This is going to be kind of a variation on brake bleeding but we're going to change the sequence. We're going to start with an open bleed screw and then push the clutch pedal. So Tim's underneath. Tim, open the bleed screw. Now I'm going to push the clutch pedal and it'll take a couple tries for the fluid to start to come out down there but as soon as I get to the floor I'll tell Tim to close the bleed screw then the pedal will come up and we'll repeat the process so open bleed screw pedal goes down close bleed screw pedal comes up open down close up Open, down, close, up, open, down, close. Now here's the vacuum bleeding setup that we used to bleed the Camaro. On the end of the hose, this time I put a little cone-shaped adapter that goes down into the port where the fluid goes into the master cylinder. Got a catch bottle there, and I'm just going to apply vacuum to it. Apply the vacuum up maybe 15 inches or so, and then just let it sit there, and it pulls the bubbles out that are in the top of the system. Let's take a closer look at dry vacuum bleeding. Now I've got the same master cylinder set up right here. I've got a line. This line is not connected to a slave cylinder. 
but it does have a quick connect at the end, so it is terminated and closed. But I replaced the black tubing here with a clear vinyl, and we've got a reservoir. Now in the car, we applied vacuum to the reservoir and pulled the last couple air bubbles out, but we really couldn't see what was going on. There's the catch bottle, got a little adapter on the line, and there's the hand operated vacuum pump. All I'm going to do is insert the adapter in the reservoir at the port right there. I'm going to apply vacuum, but watch for bubbles right here. A little bit of vacuum, and we start to get a string of bubbles. That small transfer port there for the pressure side seal, it's really small. The bubbles just can't flow through there all by themselves. That's about four inches of mercury, and it's still pulling bubbles through that system. So here's a cutaway of that system. There are two ports in here. The rear port is much larger. That's the compensating port. It feeds the back chamber. There's a seal back here and then the actual pressure seal is up here. That port is very, very small and the bubbles just won't come through there all by themselves. So this is sitting in the car like this. The bubbles are sitting right down here in front of that seal. We're applying vacuum to it and out they come. So on this style master solder at this angle, this really works and pulls those last few bubbles out. Here's another style of master solder design. The fluid is coming in, goes down to the center line of the bore, and then takes a right angle turn to get into the pressure chamber. So, but because the fluid fills the pressure chamber at the center line of the bore through a very small hole, you can have an air bubble up here. I would not recommend this type of dry vacuum bleeding for this particular system. And frequently, as in the Rangers, these are mounted at an angle, so now the bubble's way up here, and this technique just won't pull a bubble out like that. But in this case, for this system, mounted at this angle with the bubble sitting right up there, applying vacuum here, very easily pull those bubbles out and you can see them through the clear tubing. Dry vacuum bleeding isn't the absolute technique for every system, but it sure worked great on this system. I took a second look at this and wanted to see just how far bled is this little closed master cylinder line system. And to check it, all I did was push on the push rod and see how far it moved. Watch right here. I'm just pushing that push rod short strokes and it's burping bubbles out all by itself. Basically the same effect is when I had the vacuum system on there. Not pushing real far, real short strokes, and it's purging. Every air bubble that goes out, replaced by fluid. I can tell it's getting closer and closer to being completely bled as an individual master and line combination. Look at that. Remember how close that seal is to that port? This push rod's barely moving. Nothing is happening. This little sub-assembly right now is bled. Well, we got a nice crisp pedal, but having a little bit of experience, the right technique, and in this case, maybe a little bit of a special tool, that vacuum bleeder, we got a nice crisp pedal. Very, very important to have a good crisp pedal and a good clean release with reserve travel. If you have any questions about a clutch hydraulic release system, clutch system, or a flywheel, please call us toll-free at the Clutch Tech Support Hotline.